Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, where today we have a mostly tier 10 arms race battle here on the Sleeping Giant map. Now, recently I put up a video where the enemy team got reduced to zero points. Bit of a spoiler here. <laughs> I mentioned at the time that I, it was a really rare occurrence for me to actually see that happen. I think I'd only ever seen it happen in a video that you guys had sent in once, and I'd only ever had it happen to me, fortunately I was on the winning side, uh, once as well in seven years of playing this game. Well, you guys appear to have taken that as a bit of a challenge. <laughs> because I've had more than a few of that kind of result submitted uh, since that first video went up, and today is no exception. But that's not really what today's video is about. Although it is going to happen, but think of it more of as a coincidence. Because Ace Trigger 7 here in the French Tier 10 Tech Tree extremely heavy cruiser, the Marseille, is about to achieve something that he has never seen happen in all of the years that he's been playing World of Warships as well. The ship that he's in, the Marseille, it's a very, very good ship. I mean, it's basically all about the guns. It has nine 330mm guns. Unusually for a French cruiser, the high explosive is pretty good. I think it has the highest fire chance of any tier 10 cruiser, something like 35 or 36%. But it's the armor-piercing ammunition on this thing that is especially good. The Marseille is basically a dedicated cruiser killer. It has these nine 330mm guns firing armor-piercing shells with the heaviest armor-piercing broadside of any Tech Tree Tier 10 cruiser in the game. It devastates cruisers. And the high penetration, and the fact that they are pretty large caliber for a cruiser, also makes them fairly useful against battleships, especially at close range. The problem, of course, because there's always a problem, is that you don't really want to be getting the Marseille into close range against enemy battleships. Unlike other French cruisers, it doesn't have torpedoes, and the armour is terrible. Well, that's not unlike other French cruisers. The fact that it doesn't have torpedoes is unlike other French cruisers. The terrible armour, that's, you know, fairly common. But it is very, very fast. Well, her base top speed is only 33 knots. I mean, that's not slow, but it's kind of pedestrian by high-tier cruiser standards. But she has a speed boost. And if you also use a speed flag in combination with that speed boost, this thing will top out at 41 knots. Also, fairly standard for French cruisers, she has a reload booster. Ace has four charges available on that, and three charges of a heal. Last, but by no means least, finishing off a very respectable consumable loadout, the ship also comes with hydroacoustic search. And as Ace gets himself into position here, the team have already opened up the scoreboard with the friendly Des Moines knocking out one of the tier 10 enemy destroyers, a very useful start. Oh, speaking of the Des Moines, there's a whole bunch of deep water torpedoes heading in his direction. That could be very nasty. Those will have been launched by the Lucian, the Pan-Asian Tier 10 destroyer that he just sunk. Yep, there's, <laughs> there's the Flesh Wound Award. <laughs> With the, the Lucian taking out the Des Moines that just killed him. Um, that actually puts the enemy team ahead. Obviously a cruiser is worth more points than a destroyer. Plus, because this is an arms race battle, the enemy team are also ahead on buffs, with uh, two buffs collected for Ace's team's one. It's not a great start, but it's by no means disastrous. No, disastrous is what just happened to the enemy Grosser Kerfurst over there, as it catches all of the friendly Shimakaze's torpedoes. Oh dear. Right, the enemy team are no longer ahead. In fact, I don't think the enemy team are ever going to be ahead again. <laughs> Surprisingly, Ace has yet to inflict a single point of damage. And there's already been five casualties. As well as the Lucian, the Des Moines, and the very unfortunate Grosser Kerr first over there, the enemy Hayati has just gunned down the friendly Summers, but not before the friendly Summers was able to get torpedoes away and sink the enemy gearing. Meanwhile, Ace is yelling at the friendly St. Vincent to get back, but his warnings are falling on deaf ears, or they were just too late because the St. Vincent is about to become a victim of, uh, well, I thought it was going to be the Hindenburg, but it's actually the Buffalo. Either way, that's one battlecruiser down as well. 
The enemy team is still 80 points behind, however, and there is definitely an enemy submarine. Oh, he, if he'd waited a fraction of a second longer to get the depth charges away, he might have sank the Balao. But it got detected by the Gato just a fraction of a second too late. This is intensely frustrating, by the way. There's a target right there. It's in gun range. It's visible. I guess we're just going to have to shoot at the Buffalo instead. Oh, wait a second. Depth charges are back up. That did, of course, give the Buffalo time to turn and start angling his armour. Oh, the Balao's at the surface. Well, actually, it, it, not sure why it did surface. It still had plenty of consumables left. It didn't... Oh, he's been pinged. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean the Balao's actually going to be able to torpedo him, though. He has to turn the boat around first. And it looks like he's only going to be using his stern tubes. But there goes some more depth charges. More shots out at the Buffalo. He switched to the armour-piercing now. Very nice of the Buffalo to turn and give a flat broadside to shoot out with these 330mm armour-piercing shells, which, of course, just over-penetrate. <laughs> Ace backing up here. Given the Buffalo time to return fire. Buffalo really should be firing high explosive against an angled cruiser though. More depth charges away. Some hits appear to have been scored. More shots out. Both of these guys, re unless the Buffalo is going to turn to give broadside again, and he is. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. What are the chances of him just over penetrating again? Oh, I'm going to go with zero. <laughs> And there's his first kill. He's got a couple of secondary hits as well. Hang on a second. The secondaries in this thing are all at the back. Who were the secondaries shooting at? Oh, and there's the Balao. And again, visible target, low health, one-shot kill. Ha ha, can't shoot me, I'm a submarine. Oh, he probably doesn't want to be given broadside to the Hindenburg, though. He's been pinged again, and I think the Balao's stern tubes are now going to be ready to fire. Oh, that could be quite dangerous, actually. But the Hindenburg... Oh, I'm seeing a kill coming here. Well, technically, more of a kill steal. <laughs> they got the depth charges. Double strike. <laughs> oh, Hindenburg torpedo. I mean, of course there are going to be Hindenburg torpedoes. But the fact that he only ate two at point blank range out of the eight that got launched at him, that's pretty good. Right. He is flooding, of course, and he's lost half of his health. His heel's on cooldown. He hasn't actually used his... Uh, Oh, wait, no, he has used the main gun battery reload booster. He started with four charges, he's only got three left. In all the excitement, I missed it. Right. The team have still only suffered three casualties, with the enemy team suffering six. The enemy team still only have the two buffs that they started with, and they're down to 250 points. With Ace's team enjoying a very comfortable 320-point lead. He triggers the heal. That's every single one of his consumables on cooldown now. There goes the main gun battery reload booster. And... Are we going to get some... Yeah, there's the Citadels we ordered. <laughs> like I said, the Marseille is basically a cruiser killer. Even battleship Moskva over there is going to get clapped if it gives broadside to these 330mm armor piercing shells. Actually, the armour on the Moskva actually works against it when a ship like this is firing, because all of that extra armour only serves to guarantee that the fuses on the... Oh, shit! Good shooting! There's another kill, and another two Citadels. <laughs> the team are now 400 points ahead. There are only five enemies left. They still only have the two buffs they started with. They've still only managed to sink three of Ace's team. Oh, is this going to be the Kraken? This has got to be the Kraken. That's the Kraken. <laughs> the enemy team are now down to 110 points. Torpedoes ahead. Very, very handy cruiser-shaped gap there. Let's get some shots out at the Jinan. This should be an easy kill. If the Jinan angles, it's buggered because that guarantees that the fuses are going to arm and travel down the entire length of the ship. If it turns to give broadside, it's probably going to get citadel. So there are no... I mean, that thing is basically just a Pan-Asian Atlanta. It's effectively a Tier 7 light cruiser, as far as its armor's concerned. Yeah, there are no real good choices that you can make when you're getting gunned down by a Marseille and you're in what's effectively a Tier 7 light cruiser at Tier 10. And that is kill number 6 for Ace. The Jinan, of course, launched his deep water torpedoes and the friendly Tromp up ahead. 
kind of detected them with his face. It's fine, they can't hit destroyers, but given plenty of time for Ace to maneuver out of the way. The friendly Grosser Kerr first nails the last enemy destroyer. The Conqueror only survives because the team have now been reduced to zero points, and Ace's team win with a 760 point lead. And for Ace, while he scored many Kraken Unleashed before, that's the first time he's ever scored more than five kills in a battle in all of the years he's been playing this game. That was a truly miserable performance from the enemy team, with only one member of the entire enemy team scoring more, the Hindenburg, who died halfway through the match, scoring more than the worst performing player on Ace's team, with Ace comfortably at the top of the leaderboard there with two and a half thousand, well, not quite two and a half thousand base experience. Yeah, you know you're in trouble when most of the guys left alive at the end of the battle on your team are the ones at the bottom of the leaderboard, <laughs> and all the guys who died early are the ones at the top. That's, that's rarely going to end well for your team. So anyway, congratulations to Ace Trigger 7 on his first ever six-kill battle. And it, you know, it's just nice to see Joe Average doing really, really well every now and then, particularly when it's a personal milestone, like this one was for Ace. So congratulations, Ace, on your first ever six-kill battle. Everybody else, hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.